Good morning everyone. So today's video I'm working again on the great big little stitchery swap. So stitchery swap is the actual hashtag if you want to see some other YouTube people present their little pieces. So just to recap, rewind back, I was working on the red one. So look away now if you are the red one. Here we go. It's finished. So there it is. So it's a collection of some antique vintage um, bits and pieces from France, some lace, some modern things. I end up putting the old uh, laundry button on there with some gems just to sort of give that swish effect again, some little piece of crocheting, a little bit of lace in around the flower. I think I mentioned in the last video that this flower is very fine in the way that it's printed. And I just felt that if I stitched in there, I'd lose the integrity of the actual flower. So I decided to work on the background and that's where good old seed stitch comes in. So you can see them sitting there, just tiny little stitches. It's so worth it. I know you'd probably think that's pretty tedious, but it, it really is worth it. And then we've got some stitches through here. So it sort of looks like some, um, I don't know, sprigs of grass or foliage. Just felt like it needed a little, little bit of a miniature garden happening there. You could really go to town and put little pearls on them all, but I sort of felt like that was enough. And then I came back through and I had this piece of uh, rickrack or zigzag binding here that was one length. And I had planned to run it through the top here and I ended up cutting it in half and putting a little bit here and a little bit there. I just felt like it overpowered the whole piece and I lost the um, little look at that lace there. And then as I was cleaning up, I found some more of these little flowers. So I sort of started another small cluster up here. I then went around the outer edge just with some extra stitches just to sort of help anchor everything down. Really pleased with the way that one come together. So that one is done. Now the next one is purple and green. So let's get ourselves a piece of fabric. So it should be 12 by 12. I know I check this every time and it still is the same strip and it's still 12 centimeters. So I'll just snip a fraction bigger. This um, calico is a little bit on the whoopy side. So I'm just allowing that little extra. So there's our piece, put that away. Now I have my little template. And this just helps keep me in the perimeter of the piece because I tend to get a little, you know, excited and start heading off in all directions, as you well know. So that just keeps me in line. So I went hunting for a couple purples. So I found this Tilda fabric and then I found a darker purple. These are from my quilting days when I was doing some, I think they were angels, different blocks of angels and a little pile of purples. So they're all very different and I'm hoping I can sort of pull them together into something cohesive. There's a big word for the day. Now, where do we start? <laughs> all right, let's get a big piece of purple down. I really like this color. Probably could do with a bit of an iron. She's been in my scrap basket. It's so good to be using some of these scraps, let me tell you. Especially a scrap that's been around for so long, this one in particular, and the, is that a curve? I'll soon find out. Um, yeah, so we're probably talking 25 years. So it just never pays to throw out those scraps. That is a curve, so let's straighten that edge up. At least have one straight edge to start with. That's even crooked, oh my goodness. Can't be starting crooked. Don't know, is that too? 
no, I'm sort of, I'm feeling a garden actually. So if that's the case, we could do layers of purple in the ground. Would that look weird? I don't know. <laughs> Well, we'll give it a go. We'll cut some bits off. I might need more bits, but. We'll see how we go. Okay. So we need more bits. We need more layers. Let's have a look in the bucket of small scraps neutral. And let's see if we can find some, we need something to go up in the sky. So here's a piece of, there's a little join where two pieces have come together there. Let's see if we can include that. It'll be subtle, but it'll be there. This is a piece of um, very old linen. Okay, so we've got a bit of a sky thing happening. That's a slightly different piece. I uh, don't think I want any hills. I think we want to keep it like a garden, to be honest. I don't know. We'll just keep putting... I don't want to lose the the whoosh of purple, but I do want to have some other textures in there. So it does feel like we're, I don't know, use my big words, Corinne. So it feels like we have some form happening. Let's see. There's some pretty blocks popping up now. It's a week or so on from when the project started. So they're all starting to make their way to their, their owners. So we're getting all of these videos pop up or just even on Instagram, on the Facebook group that Annie has set up. And um, gee, some nice ones. Okay, oh, here's a soft fabric. Oh, it's a pink. Oh, that'll work. Where am I going to cut it? There's a little flower. And cut it through here. a random little piece and put it down there I think yep I like that what else have we got in our little bucket of tricks here I just start. This is from a a blanket I did with um, what do you call it? Cross stitch, Peter Rabbit images on it. So that there is my blanket stitch from goodness knows when. Because I I started that. Gosh, when I was probably nineteen. I'm now slightly over fifty. I might as well pop it in there like what a nice little morsel of yumminess. Um, got a little bit of this sari silk. Is that a bit too bold? No. No, it's a bit meh. I like it, but I want to try and stay within the colour. Palette. 
Need something through there. Maybe I could put some lace through there. All right, time to look in the lace department. Um, oh, I know. Let me just jump up and have a look in the slightly bigger lace department. Use some of these edges that come from, um, you know, when you cut the, the motifs out of um, table runners and things. I'm going to put that through there, I think. These little edges are great to sort of form up gardens or, um, yeah, I like that. It's very random. I have pushed the purple back a bit, so, yeah, I like that. Do I like? Yeah, I do. I feel like I need something else across that, that crocheted element. I wonder if I could get one of these big scallops. I know it's big and overpowering, but I just feel like maybe we can handle it. Or maybe it goes smaller. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll look for a smaller one. There'd have to be one in here. I'm so proud of myself, guys. I tidied up my table. I'm down to four immediate buckets of goodies. Lacy random bits. Crocheted edge bits. Now I'm heading off on a tangent. Okay, five buckets. Little morsels with a little bit of music in here. Just good generic pieces. Too good to throw out pieces. Then I have my, my lace, immediate lace, and some um, delicate doily bits. See, that bit there might work. Let's take that bit. <laughs> Gosh, I love slow stitch. It is just so freeing. And then the final bucket is just some little pieces of different colors that I can grab um, to add, you know, texture or something to a piece. So that's four main pots. Now they were all joined into one big pile just off from my desk. It was just out of hand. And then this was sort of the little bits that would get lost in the whole thing. So that's nearly, that's nearly the sister to this. A little bit of lacy stuff and a little bit of, um, fabric -y bits and in my squares I've got over here things like string, sari silk and um, seam binding. Um, there should be actually there should be some cheesecloth. Let's get that out because that will work and eyelash yarn you know just fibrous things so fibers in here, lace that has been crocheted over here and then this big section is all the, the bits, the bits and pieces. So there's my logic. Watch it all destroyed by the end of this video. So this little piece here, I might tuck it up in here just to add that little extra. And I feel like it needs to go over here. Yeah, this feels like a, a mountain swishing up there so let's get maybe some of this in this will really help soften it as well this is cheesecloth i just get this at my local cheap shop around um now i've lost a piece around halloween you often see that spider web stuff to pop up it's pretty good for this type of work don't want to cover my little flower there we go so there's my background so now the next thing is to grab needle and thread and would you believe i've left my 
needle and thread in the next room. So I'm going to need to pause my video and go and grab that and then I'll be back. The other thing I need to do is have a look at some threads to stitch through it. So I might grab my tray with the purple and then um, I'll be back and we'll start planning a bit of a garden, I think. Somehow get some flowers happening. So I will pause the video. So we're in 15 minutes. So that gives us 45 minutes to play. All right, won't be a moment, guys. Okay, guys, I'm back. Now I've got my needle and thread, got myself slightly organized, tidied up my mess here, found a couple cottons that I think sort of blend with this whole um, scene. And I also did a few pins because I need to get this secure. So I just put a line of them through this side. That'll hold this side where my hand's coming through. And then I just did two over here just to anchor them from uh, swinging around. So I'm just going to do first some rows of invisible stitch through just to hold it. Actually, being that this is lines, I'm going to actually... Instead of doing invisible stitch with this cotton, I'm going to make my stitch visible. So just a, a little tacking stitch, but we'll make it part of the texture. This is one scenario where your, your um, process of securing your pieces could actually still be a feature within the layers so I'm just going to use my cotton and do a running stitch through. Try and rock the needle through, otherwise we'll be here forever. Try not to rush too, because the moment you rush, you start unthreading and you know how it goes. Alrighty. Yeah, that's good. That's a better position. I'm sort of got my weight of my hand on my piece so it's not going anywhere. I'm just holding the needle and rocking it through. I don't feel so cack handed when I'm doing this. So now I'm turning around and I'm going to get myself going again. Yeah, that's working really well. So whether these little stitches will be seen at the end, who knows? But being that this is lots of layers in a horizontal fashion, I nearly said vertical, in a horizontal fashion, we can get away with letting them be part of the texture. Oh, goodness. I feel like I'm losing my voice. I've been talking too much which I'm sure you're not surprised. Okay, turn it around. So I sort of started about an inch into the piece and then I've worked my way back to the bottom. I haven't done a layered piece like this for a little while. I love looking at them too, when they pop up on Instagram or Pinterest and that. I love looking into them to see what's all in there. Like how many, how many, um, how many different fabrics can you get into one piece? They're just so interesting. There's some artists out there that do nothing but this style of work, and um, oh, it's just so beautiful. Oh, like I can get rid of that pin, can't I? Get him out of my world and I can get rid of that one because we've got a stitch. Oh, he's gone deep, doesn't matter. He can stay there. Okay. Now I can end that off so lickety split I've done three tacking rows doesn't take long 
that's the beautiful thing about these little these little pieces and if you're new to slow stitch and there's a heap of you out there that are coming over and a lot of you grew up doing embroidery the old-fashioned way you know where we'd get our lace uh, our doilies and and then uh, do the basic stitches I'm going outside the boundaries seriously I don't think it matters does it I hope not where's my boundaries I should have trimmed it um, what was I saying yeah a lot of us grew up doing embroidery you know lazy daisy so to join back into the embroidery world again but without all of those rules and using some of these treasures that we've got in the cupboard or going hunting for treasures like there's nothing better than on your <laughs> hands and knees in the back of a thrift store looking in a, a, a random little box that the workers have been throwing random items for probably six months thinking no one's ever going to buy that and then along comes Corinne <laughs> so picture picture some industrial light industrial shelving lots of boxes stuff everywhere and here's Corinne with her head in the shelving and her on her hands and knees and her butt hanging out <laughs> I went um I went op shopping a couple of weeks ago with a friend who's not into um, slow stitch or anything like that but she likes a good bargain and is always looking for things that she can upcycle for her garden or um, you know just handy things and she's got a puppy so she's at the moment looking for just dog toys dog bits and she's picked up leads and um, harnesses and oh amazing what she's actually picked up I wouldn't have even thought to look. I would have just gone straight to a pet store. So where she's like, no, I'm going to take you to all of my op shops. So we're in her her hometown. And I'm like, oh, yes, please. So anyway, I wasn't doing real well. There wasn't so far anything for me. And we get to this one place and it was a little bit dark and a little bit moody. And I thought, oh, this feels like it could be a little treasure trove. So sure enough, I go around this one row of racking and it was rows and rows of racking. It wasn't really merchandised like some of them. Some of them are getting really retail-y looking. You've probably noticed it too, starting to look real um, shop-like. Well, this one still felt like that classic uh, thrift store from the 80s. So anyway, I'm dropped to my knees. <laughs> I'm in the back corner and my mate's obviously started looking for me and she can't see me she thinks I've gone outside because I hadn't found anything that I wanted at the previous stores so she's out in the car park looking for me can't find me so she comes back in she can't find me because I'm on my hands and knees in the back of the shop going through these buckets and I think oh well I'm I'm going to be here a while because there's numerous buckets and uh, so now I'm cross-legged sitting on the floor like a 10-year-old with these buckets around me. She's looking for me. I'm convinced that she'd be busy anyway, so she won't miss me. So <laughs> she's... <laughs> oh, my goodness me. I'm going to move that in a little bit because I am way past the boundary and I'd hate to snip any of that off. So, yeah, she comes around the back of this shelving and finds me sitting there <laughs> surrounded by these pots searching through them and you should have seen her face she's like I've been looking everywhere for you it was so funny she said you look like a, a kid sitting there going through a toy box trying to work out what toys you want and I thought yeah that's actually pretty close <laughs> these are all little toys these little bits and pieces did I find anything super brilliant? No, not really. I don't know. I did. Yeah, 
I can't even really remember now. It's gone into the abyss that is this room. I'm sort of feeling like I'm seeing the same things at the moment. And to be honest, I've got so much stuff. Well, not a lot, but when you break it down into these little pieces, you don't need much. So I sort of decided that unless it's something I've never seen in the way of a textile, I'm not not doing it and I'm looking more for packs that other people put together because um, I then get other influences. I get pieces that I probably wouldn't have thought to grab but then can see the value in them but there's only a little bit so that's all I need. So I'm sort of um, feel like I've got lots of big things and I'm looking for interesting little things. Does that make sense? And it's really lovely to support some of my fellow um, creators that are doing packs because that's their world. That's what they do to make a few extra coins. So I'm sort of happy enough just to sort of cruise around the Etsy stores and pick up the odd pack is sort of where I'm at at the moment. So I'm just now going to run back through there. I've got through all of that crocheted piece. So that little piece there of the baby blanket, that's a bit special that. That was the baby that never happened for me. Not that I was yearning to have a child. Gosh, I feel for those ladies that you know, some people just have that instinct to have a child and then can't have children and have to go through the whole IVF thing. Oh, oh thank goodness I never had that drive for a child. I sort of have a drive for everything. That's my problem. And then if I don't get one thing, I just drive on to the next. <laughs> That's my problem. So, yeah, for a few years there, my husband and I were like, oh, we better better get down to this family business. And then it never really happened. Never happened. We were never blessed with children. But it wasn't crucial. Like, we got so busy so quickly with our business. And any jobs we were in, we were very quickly sucked up into the corporate structure that big businesses are. So we were just so busy. Maybe it was just stress that stopped me from having kids. I don't know. But anyway, we went and got checked out because I started to think maybe there might be something medically wrong that was crucial. I needed to get sorted out. But no, they could see little eggs coming down the tubes and they checked hubby out and he was fine. He's were just a bit slow and lacked energy. <laughs> and I had some hills and mountains on the way to my eggs. Oh gosh, I'm getting personal here. But um, pretty much his were lazy and there was a, quite some terrain to get to. So it just never happened. Just never happened. And every so often it'd pop into our minds and we'd think, right, let's get focused on all this and never happened. So we moved on. It's just allowed us to spoil children around us without having to raise them, which has got benefits, let me tell you. As you watch them grow up and they become adolescents and you see their poor parents. So we provide the roast dinners and the therapy for the mums and dads that are dealing with these cute little babies that are all now finding boys and finding girls and driving and, oh, my goodness, and now they're all at the age where they're trying to save to get mortgages. And oh boy, isn't that heartbreaking? Oh, you've got to feel for any children that are being born now. Imagine what it's going to be like for those kids to try and get their lives started. It's just... I probably wouldn't have a YouTube channel if I had kids. I wouldn't have the time. A lot of people do ask me, 
how do you do what you do? Do you have children? And as soon as I say no, they're like, oh, okay. And you can see that it's like relief on their faces because they have families and they're like, well, straight away they're thinking, well, what am I doing so wrong if I can't be doing all that as well? And it's like a relief. It's like, no, no, I don't have kids. So that's, that's what would be slowing me down because, you know, you've got to raise a family first. Mind you, I have about 40 staff, so that's, that's enough. That keeps me busy. Ish. Still got enough time to stitch. Helps clear my thoughts when I'm stitching. I'm just going to now run some stitches through this top section because it's clear of any texture or anything. It's really visible. I might just do a few little extras. Like the piece is secure. But I'm now thinking more along the lines of making it look interesting. So I might just pull myself off a, a little bit more A little bit more thread. So the plan is with this piece, I think, is I'm going to cut out some of these little flowers. Now I did this on a Jesse Chorley panel 12 months ago. May was it 12 months? Maybe more. And use them really close together to create um oh what's that flower is it a hydrangea because the hydrangea has lots of little flowers to make up the big head yeah it is i might just grab that piece it's just beside me here and i'll show you what i mean and that way you'll get an instant feel for my look I'm going for so I'll just make this the last row I might even trim the edges because if I get carried away with the flowers it's going to be harder to pull back embroidery I'll catch that little piece there yeah harder to pull back an embroidered flower from over the edge and it'll help with the composition of all of those flowers if I know where my edges are and how we place them. Oh, I do want to do some little lines of... So let's have a look at... Oh, see that one there is out in the wilderness, but that's okay. Just trim back a little bit and I'll see where we're at. My hubby has a toothache. It's been hanging around for a few days, but he's always had this tooth that if anything gets wedged between the gum and the tooth, it flares up. So a good extra brushing around that region usually gets rid of whatever it is and it goes away. And the other night we went to the movies and he had some popcorn and popcorn's notorious for depositing that little hard shell between your gum and your teeth. So he just put it down to that. But it, it lingered for a few days after many brushings. And then finally, it just went after a really good brushing. He was talking about coming from the other direction. He's got these little brushes that he runs through his, between his teeth. They're funny little things. I don't like them. They, they feel like they're ripping me to bits. But anyway, he, he really likes them. And he said he come from the other direction. I can't believe I'm talking about teeth now. Anyway, you get everything with me. 
Um, so what I'm thinking I'm going to do next, guys, so I've got, yeah, so he's dislodged whatever it was and the pain went. I'm just grabbing my threads. I feel like I need a third purple. So he's dislodged it and the tooth settled down for two days. Well, this morning as I was getting out of bed to come in here and hang with you guys, he says, oh, gee, my tooth aches back. So he's either got something else caught in there from last night's dinner or we've got a bigger problem. And I'm just wondering, so see, see how I'm, Let's finish the story first. I think he's got a bigger problem. I think we need a dentist today. Anyway, what I'm thinking is using the three colours, run some lines through to help build up layers. Now I'm going to use all six of this guy because I want it quite purple but when it gets up to here with this guy I might break it down to maybe even one thread maybe two so that it gets quite pale up there I don't want to I don't want to overpower the piece does that make sense so I'm just going to run some lines of this through. I think that'll look really neat. Come on, stay together as, as one thread. Don't be So what have you guys got planned for today? You're going to get a chance to do some stitching. I hope so. I'm always stitching something. Even if I've got nothing that needs to be stitched for, you know, videos, I just stitch something. And often it leads to something. <laughs> I'm in the process of building a website for myself. But it's such a slow process because it's so boring that I don't know when I'll ever get it done. It might take a year, it might take three days, you know, it's that type of task. You either, I'm a bit of get in and get it done type of girl, as you may have noticed, boots and all in. But I just haven't had that commitment yet. So it's been sitting there kicked off. Like I've got a staff or ex-staff manager who's really good at websites. And he's built his own for his own business. And he's also uh, helped us change the Christmas shack over to a website. Our website had got old. So we redid it. And uh, he helped me do that. So I'm going to use the same platform, it's uh, Shopify. And it was really simple to use and Etsy is just a pain now. They just, I don't know what's going on with that company. I'm seeing quite a few YouTubers comment on it. So I've decided I'm going to do my own website. There's no rush, like it's just to hold a few PDF files. So at the moment I've still got the Etsy store, but... I'll slowly merge it over. It might take 12 months. It's so low on my priority list, but it's, you know, it's one of those things that's going to have to be done sooner rather than later. I'm just going to take my line of stitching behind that little pink piece of, um, I don't know what it is. True, it's not true. Organza. I'm just taking it behind it so I don't 
overpower it with my stitch. I won't keep doing this step because I think you get the general gist of it and it'll be quite boring. I want to get on to the flowers and I should be able to navigate around them once they're in position with this running stitch anyway. So I'm not to but technically if you were to do this probably correctly in the right order you would do all of your running stitch next get all of those stitches in position and you could do as many or as, as little as you like i'll definitely do a ray a a line of color uh, let's just keep some threading Six threads is a bit of a challenge. Okay, let's just finish that off because it's plenty of the dark purple. Let's do that again in case it comes out. It's going to be interesting to see what everyone does with all these little squares. How do you present them? Okay, so like I said, I'll run some of this next color through, then I'll work into the lighter purple. So where's my little tray for later? Here it is, a little container. So we're going to need those. I will probably do a few of those through as well, just using some of the um, cotton, just to keep adding layers. Now, let me show you the Jessie Chorley idea that I'd like to repeat. Okay, now this panel, I believe, was called The Garden, I think. So I'm just going to bring it into shot. This is a pre-printed panel that Jessie Chorley has. It's back in stock on her website and ages ago, I think it was last year, I filmed section by section as I slowly collaged it together to create um, a sort of my, my, a wash of me over her pre-printed panel. So see these little flowers here? These are itty bitty uh, flowers cut out of the Tilda fabric with a little French knot in the center of them um, to create this hydrangea. And it, I was really happy with the way that came together. So when I saw that this particular prompt was going to be purple and green, straight away garden popped into my mind. And this really is just full of garden ideas. So I could even do a yo-yo I don't have a lot of space, like before I get out of hand here, but a yo-yo might fit. Some button flowers might fit where we use a button and then create a stem up to it. Um, I've got some of those little guys in purple, I think. That's like a braid where they're all embellished, like little um, embroidered rosettes. And I'm pretty sure I have a purple in that. Um, I definitely love using um, twine to create stems because I like that brown, that hint of brown instead of it all being green. You can see it in the tree using the brown, then adding the leaves. So I think I'm going to go along the lines of building the garden a bit loose like this is. Um, where are some more? Yeah, little clusters, see at the base of the house there, that little cluster. Like there's just so much you can do with gardens, especially if you want to be a little bit um, abstract. So let's pop that out of the way and start, because I'm going to say that my background is completed, except for the little bit of purple thread that we want to wind through. So... What I do first is the flowers. I don't worry about the stems until 
all the flowers are into position because until the top is done of each plant, you don't know how big to make a stem. Does that make sense? If your stem is too thick, it doesn't look right because your flower has got this huge um, top to it. No, no, change that again. You might have a really thick stem that doesn't suit the flower at the top. So I always work flower down. Stems last. Does that make sense? Just a little thing I've found over the years. So what I'm doing is I'm just now going to fussy cut out some of these little guys. Just work my way around them. Tilda's got some lovely little fabrics and this is part of a series called Woodland. So if you see it, grab it because these little itty bitty flowers are fantastic for doing little pieces like this. Okay. I need one more, I think. Oh, there's two there. And then what I'll do is I will place a a French knot in them. This little guy can go next. Maybe I put a bead in them. I don't know if I got something small enough. Let's have a look. So actually, before we go too far, this is the Tilda pack that I got this fabric from. So, oh, there's some more purple. Let's pull that out. It's a great little range of fabrics because it gives you some beautiful bigger pieces that can be stitched. There's a tree with some woodland animals, the whole premise of this theme. And then there's just different colored flower combinations in it. It's such a, a great little piece of fabric range. So that one's called Woodland. I have seen it still out and about. I'm going to nibble out some of these because they are purple. And that just is too easy. Okay. Can blend a few of those in it would be rather cute and sometimes your flowers get so full that your stems can actually be a whole lot, le a whole lot less than you thought you needed another reason why you do you do your um, the top of your presentation first because you'll be surprised how then just maybe a couple strokes of um, twigs or branches is enough to sort of finish your scene of your flowers. So I'm going for a bit of a wildflower vibe here I think. Tuck that one in gonna cluster them a little get our little feature happening and to make it easy on myself what I might do because I'm getting out of hand here with the flowers is we might just put a little invisible stitch in the center of them all let's see if I can do it without them all flying off and then I know they're secure Scoot carefully around. I have a dear friend having an operation today. It's not a serious operation, but 
it has got infected. And you know how that can go serious. He had some big surgery on a break on his ankle years back. Wore some thongs or flip-flops down a creek bank, slipped, broke his ankle. So they had to do some really tricky work to get that ankle sorted. Roll on a probably four years and some of the hardware used to fix the ankle is now wanting to leave the ankle. So he's got a little infection and the body is rejecting some of the bits and bobs in there. So it is a simple operation. He's gone back to the original surgeon who mended him. So which is good because he did present himself at emergency at a small hospital. And um, after a bit of a chat with those surgeons, they were, look, if you can get back to see the guy that built your leg, your ankle back up, go back to him. So he has. So today's the day that he goes in to have that sorted. So put him in your thoughts. He should be fine, but He's, he's not a young fellow and it's a nasty little infection and I just don't trust infections. I just, you know, the body is amazing and the body does seem to know what it's doing most of the time. So it is obviously saying, get that bit out of me. I don't need it anymore. And his ankle is really well healed. So maybe, maybe they should look at going back into such injuries and removing hardware, why why put the body at, you know, pressure? I don't know. I'm not a surgeon. So today's his day to go in there and get it all sorted. So say a little quiet prayer for him. I'm sure he'll be fine, but, you know, it's just on my mind. There we go. That's So they've all been secured just with a little stitch. It's just going to hold them there for me until I work out what I'm going to do with them. Now, I feel like we could do something else. Actually, I just want to grab my braids. Um, where are they? There they are. Oh, my goodness. See what happens when you tidy up. There's a bit of purple in there. Hello. I do love that. Just just that. Like that. That's very pink. But I do love it. I'm going to do it. This was a little pack of bits and pieces. You know, I was talking about getting little packs of things instead of buying, you know, masses of things. These little packs, when you see them, are just great. Like, I just need bits. Look, that's the same principle of a little flower stitched on top of there. Oh, hello, there's another container. I found this. Oh, hello. I found this little bundle of goodies at um, Sewing Lair, which is a recycling, upcycling place. What am I cutting there? That feels like a thread that is holding something on. So I think I got that out without too much damage, but what I will do is just pop a little bit of glue on that edge just if I come back again on a rainy day and nibble some more off of that I know that that's gonna oh how good is that well that was unexpected okay gee I love that I hope it's purple enough <gasps> It's gone very lavender. What's in here? 
Oh, look. Some little purple. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's going lavender. Here's a dark one. Yep. Oh, there's another lavender. Oh, it's going lavender. <laughs> Let's do that one. Let's get him up the back here. Oh, I love it when I can piece together little bits and pieces. It's so much fun. He sort of looks like he's sticking out like not meant to be. We've got another dark purple. There's another soft purple. I think that's it. I wonder if I've got something in the braids where I was meant to go. Well, that was a random find. I haven't looked or taken anything out of that since the day I bought it, which was probably 12 months ago. So that's pleasant. Okay, so you can see those flowers at the back now probably don't need much stem at all. Um, I wonder what's in my beads. How are we going for time? We've got 15 minutes to pull this together. I really like that. Um, let's have a look at beads next, guys. So I need my tray. Purple. Bear with me. I don't know if I've got much purple. Okay, we've got a bit. Oh, this might be where I can bring a bit more of a stronger purple into. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, I like them. They will be perfect in there. And I can scatter some through here. That'll build that up. A purple sequin, but it, it might be too much. I think it's too much. I've got some bigger beads, so that'll give me a bit of texture. Then I got some little ones. Oh, hello. And some pale. So there's my three colours. That'll that'll wash right through the bottom here. Yep, happy with that. Um, I do want to grab that braid. Let me just look across the room to see where I put it all before I go on. I can see them. All right. Hang on one second, guys. <clears throat> all right. This is my bucket of braid. And I'm sure there's a purple... That's got a bit of blue in it. Here, there we go. This. So this is the sister to my Colgate. Isn't that a sign that my husband needs a dentist? See, there's the there's the pink one that I used in the Jesse Chorley. There's the purple. Now I think. There's even one in here. Look, I've been nibbling away at this as well. So let's take that whole piece. Because maybe... Oh, there's some more. No, they're not. Nope. It's uh, an odd colour purple. Let's add a couple of those. That will just bring a bit of that greenery into the garden. Because I think the prompt was green as well, wasn't it? So let's just pop a... Oh, don't like that. Then I can pick up those greens and maybe bring them up. So now we've got our 
foreground garden. We've got a bit of a wildflower thing happening there. So where did this little ribbon get to? Let's remove this fellow. Let's pop him up there and this fellow. Let's pop him in there. Now it's getting interesting. There we go. Can we get this ribbon in somewhere? I think we should. Maybe just that little piece there. And a little piece. Uh, I don't know. What I might do is just hang on to that. Because I think I've got enough here to worry about. I'm going to get some needle and thread and just put some little stitches like I did up here just to tack everything down. Then I know that it's all secure. I think I need to move this guy down into there. Now, very carefully, I'm going to just try and tack all this down. A lot of these have got quite a bit of rigidity to them because they're embroidered little pieces. I need to change my needle to something finer so that I can just stab straight through all of those little pieces. It is, oh, it's Reginald. Come on, Reginald. Just behave yourself. Go straight through with clear precision no attitude, and just do what you're meant to do. Uh, I might need to pin it. Let's have a go. I'm really pushing, pushing the boundaries here. But Reginald is, see, Reginald just stabs straight through, literally stabs anything in his path. <laughs> Let me tell you, my pinky's under there. Come on, Reginald. No, there you go. Got him. So I'll just scoot to there next, catch that little guy. Good on your Reg, you're doing a good job. We'll catch that little piece there. Don't go too fast, girl, because Reggie gets a bit antsy. If you've just tuned into my channel and you're wondering what the hang I'm talking about now in this professional professional setup that we have going here. Reginald is my bead needle. It is fine. He is sharp. I don't think he's the sharpest tool in the shed, but he is perfect for beading. And he's, I lost a flower. He's perfect for stabbing me multiple times. And the more I rush, the more Reginald gets a little antsy and bites me. So if you're wondering what the hang I'm talking about, it's our beading needle. I've never felt the urge to name any other needle because they don't seem to have such attitude. But Reggie here, he's been known to shoot up my fingernail. He's been known to penetrate my fingers. I like that little touch of green because it was starting to get very purple. And it is a garden after all. Just doing a little pos reposition here. So 
so I've pushed the green combo over the top of that purple just pushed it back a little bit I know he's a one only and he's sitting there probably like a bit of a sore thumb but I think with the beads especially that lot I think I can balance it out just with those beads and he's a one only so let's give him a home he'll be a one only for the next 10 years if he doesn't get out and get used and often you need five or three of things so to have a chance to have a one only this little guy I'm going to put by himself over to the side just to have a bit of a break in the garden so there's a cluster here a little bit of a thing happening here and this little guy's by himself over here All right, so Reginald now is ready to stay with me and start picking up beads as I work way back through. But what I might do is I'm just going to re-thread and take Reginald over here and catch that flower into position and then maybe drift back through the whole thing now that everything's nice and secure. So those beads are adrift there, so I need to secure them. That's from cutting that little bit out. So let's, let's get him into position up there with a couple stitches. Well, we've had a real medical vibe to this video, so I hope I haven't grossed anyone out. It's funny the topics we cross, hey? Welcome to my world. It's just what's happening at the moment. Okay, so I'm just scooting at a bit of a diagonal back towards the center. Don't want to stitch everything down too heavily too because like you could go around that whole flower and make it nice and secure but you sort of want to i don't know i like the feeling of a little bit of texture oh, isn't that the go-to world word just feels like it's a little bit dimensional now when i finished with securing all these flowers and putting the beads in then there, I just lost that bead. It's where I was heading. I need to get in here. First thing is I will secure those beads. So let's get them off of that little thread and onto my thread. And Reggie will take care of that. Beads will work well with this piece because there's already some in here. So I do need to secure that little thread that's popping up there before I just cut it off because I would say it then connects to these beads and these as we work up that little motif. So I'm just going to put a few stitches there before it becomes a unravelling up this little pearl that dropped off of it let's get him back on doesn't really matter where he goes at this stage because it's now into random oh, 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 oh. slow down reg that's it so what i might do now so as a warning is i'm going to do some stitches right up the center of that sprig so if you had a lace that um, was in the shape of some foliage, you could then come across it with beads and do exactly what the manufacturer did with this little, little purple lace here. I'll bring it up to the camera so you can have a really close look at it because it's a really lovely way of 
Okay, so you can see that that was a branch of lace in behind. And then the manufacturers put a big bead at the end, two little beads, big bead, two little beads. That's really quite clever. Nice way to finish some lace off and that'd be easy for us to do as well. What I might do, because I just don't trust their beading is I'm gonna come back through all of those and put a stitch of mine in. That way, if there's a break there that I don't realize, those little beads are nice and secure. So I remember grandma saying when she was beading a bridal dress, a wedding dress, she'd always put two stitches in every bead. So even if it was one bead by itself, or a little line of beads, she would make sure there were two stitches. That way, if the bride was dancing or something, she said, you do not want the beads coming off. I remember taking my wedding dress, which was heavily beaded, because I just love all this, and so did grandma. I took it to the dry cleaners and he looked at it and went, oh, love, let me tell you now, when we take this out of the bag after being dry cleaned, because I put it in a bag, apparently, you'll get a half a cup of beads handed back to you. And I didn't think much more of it. I'm like, oh, okay, right I. I thought to myself at the time, well, I can stitch them back on. So I wasn't too concerned, but that would be, I guess, mortifying for someone who wasn't good at needlework or wasn't even interested. Anyway, I go back a week later to get my dress and they come up to me with it and there was about three of them at the counter and I thought, oh, hang, there's some bad news. that they've, they've wrecked it. Did I do this one? I can't remember. I'll do it again just in case I didn't doesn't feel secure it's wobbly that's a good sign too that your beads aren't secure is they're wobbly yeah so I get to the register to pay for my dry cleaning of my wedding dress and there was this fellow again who was pretty dry sort of character a lady that sort of looked like could be his wife an older lady and then a young one they were all at the register with and they popped the bag they unzipped it you know those garment bags and um, my bodice was first thing to be seen and it was so heavily embellished with beads. Anyway, um, they were like, we've never seen anything like it. There was not one bead in the bag. So they were so impressed with where did you get it made, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, it was my grandma. So there you go. It is possible. That um, yeah, made me feel really proud of Grandma's skills. I'm going to end that off. I was going to start picking up some of these other beads and going for it, but my thread's just too small. But for now, Reg has done his work. I probably, I might leave it at that because I think you guys have got a good feel for where I'm heading with this. I need to probably just take a breath for a moment. I'll let, I've got this thread over here ready to go and I'll drift back through with the beads. So they're all good to go. But what I do need to do is work those three threads in the background before it becomes just impossible. I'll take this with me. I just feel like I might put a pop of something in there, but I'm not sure. Just fray that off a little bit. I need to secure those because they're just flapping in the wind, but that feels really good now. I need to put a stitch through that bead and that bead just, to, just for my own peace of mind, knowing that it's nice and secure. You can just see where there's a second piece of this um, vintage or it'd be antique has been stitched together. So it's like a linen that's been stitched. So it's given like a little, little line up there. That's just gorgeous. Okay.
let's leave it at that. There's my purple one. And I'll go away and play. And then I'll be back in the next video to show you it finished. And we will start again on another one. All right, guys, look after yourselves. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.